Welcome to episode three of our uh, panel discussions on religion, culture, and society. Uh, in this episode, we are going to be talking about religious movements and new religious practices. And once again, we have with us Professor Prema Kumara from the University of Colombo, Department of Sociology, Dr. Nirmal Ranjit Devasiri, his Department of History, also from the University of Colombo, and, and Dr. Anton Pieratna from the Department of Social Studies of the Open University of Sri Lanka. So I'm going to start with uh, Anton. Uh, what do we mean by a religious movement? Uh, uh, and how do we distinguish between a religious movement and a non-religious movement? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Harini. Of course, um, uh, the, as if we take, if we really focus about definitions, we define religious movements as, uh, it's, you know, simply, it is an, it is, it, it has a, as an invented tradition of practicing alternative methods, uh, lifestyles, worshiping patterns, and rituals, etc. So uh, that is, you know, that is out, happening outside the established religious institutions. We were discussing about religious organizations and all earlier. So they are, uh, for an example, if you take in Sri Lanka, we know we have a kind of, uh, you know, the definition, uh, though we give that broader definition, understanding of uh, this concept can be really subject to biases. Uh, you know, if I am, if I am to give, a, give an example, uh, we have, you know, established temples in Sri Lanka. But uh, today we have seen uh, now kind of modern temples are coming. We call them, let's say, Asapur, right? So Asapurs are uh, you know, spreading everywhere in the country. So that can be considered as a new trend in, the, in, in, in Buddhism. So that can be considered, in a way, that can be considered as, as, a, as a movement as well. And also, if we take kind of traditional examples, um, uh, we have uh, you know sects, cults, and mm -hmm. all. Uh, if we take uh, Kali cult in in Sri Lanka, so ka worshiping goddess Kali is expanding, you know, spreading uh, in the in the city as well. So perhaps you know if that uh, if it is developed to a kind of force, you know, a trend. So that it's a way of alternative worshiping pattern. So that also can be considered as a as a movement. So what, for example, what about uh, the the uh, bod bodhi puja that yeah, is also something that is sort of uh, fairly well a trend that started in I think the 1970s. Mm. Is is that a new practice or is that a what is it that a, a sort of a new practice that has evolved or how I'm, I'm still not clear how that how a new movement a religious movement emerges from can something I, like that. Yes, I please. Something? I think uh, the religious movements, of course, mm. is a part of a larger uh, social uh, social movement. Mm. Religious movements can be actually taken place in the three different levels. Mm. Uh, one is actually religious movements can, can be emerge mm. within the religion. So that is something, you know, uh, what we call the sort of a, uh, endogenous religious movements, you know, which is uh, very much... Uh, happening within the religion. Mm. Then, of course, uh, the religious movements can be uh, emerged actually uh, the outside of the religion. So that is, that movements have to, uh, just wanted to change the, the environment of the religion. You know, uh, for instance, they are, for, for instance, the revival movements uh, uh, can be actually uh, the, uh, identified as a, uh, such movement. Then again, of course, we can have actually religious movements uh, very much uh, uh, something uh, generate entirely new kind of a religious movements, right? Which is not really sort of a part of a one particular established religion, but that can be actually uh, emerged uh, entirely uh, sort of a, uh, in, uh, as a new 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 religious movements. You know, for instance, say. Uh, 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 say, for instance, there are religion, actually religious movement in, for instance, say, envir en environmentalist movement, uh, mm -hmm. something where religiously actually con considered there's a Buddhist environmentalist movement, something like that. It is, it is not really uh, happening within the religious, but entirely mm -hmm. outside of the religion, mm -hmm. and it's developed new uh, new culture, new cult, actually, uh, apart from the, uh, the, the established religion. Mm. So religious movements, of course, very much, uh, you know, even if you take uh, religious political movements, even, mm. uh, 
right uh, religiously flavored of course uh, religious movement uh, you know they are at, uh, environmentally flavored uh, religious, culturally uh, you know uh, designated uh, sort of a religious movement so religious movements can be vary from uh, the different uh, levels and different positions that they are uh, taking different issues that they are addressing mm. uh, it might be some sort of a, a reformative movement uh, maybe uh, something very uh, theologically driven, mm. uh, something you know. Even fundamentalist movement can be designated as a as a religious movement. So, so like yeah. Well, uh, Nirmal. Mm. Now, if you think about in the in episode two, actually we talked about the concept of religiosity, and then we are talking here now about religious movements. And religious movements can have a cultural flavor, an environmental flavor or even a political flavor to it. So how does religiosity, because that was what we said really, of, uh, that's where the, uh, the sort of impulse for religion mm. also comes from, that sense of religiosity. How is that manifested in p religious movements? Yeah, yes, uh, I think uh, that we can uh, look at these uh, the two uh, things, the religiosity and religion, mm. established religion. And, uh, so the, the dialectical relationship between the two is very important. I think, the, I mean, just uh, following up uh, what uh, Anton and Prem Kumar uh, discussed, so as a way out, I, 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 I can, you know, say that, you know, that first of all, let's see, I, I, I'll come back to your, you know, the question. Um, uh, so you have sort of es uh, established, organized, institutionalized religions, yes. right? Religion practices, yes. right? And then there may be times where uh, there may be moments where there's a tension between the religious desires of people and the, you know, institutionalized uh, religions, mm. right? So there may be people who believe that, you know, this organizational religion may not address properly to your mm. desire, to religious fantasies and so on, mm. right? So take, for example, the famous religious movement, that Buddhist uh, religious movement that uh, emerged in, you know, several decades ago, the Vinaya Vardhana movement, mm -hmm. right? So there, there was a critic, uh, there was a, uh, so there was a sort of uh, uh, criticism from certain sections of uh, the Buddhist religious community that, uh, so there's a decline in, uh, you know, the, uh, I mean, discipline, you know, there's some spirit, decline of spirituality, spirituality yeah. right, in the dominant practices, in mm -hmm. institutionalized mm -hmm. practices, right? And so then, uh, so this, uh, this decline, this degeneration, as they uh, thought of it, was addressed by new, you know, mm -hmm. uh, new initiatives, yeah. right? So it was to, you know, the... Uh, it was something to do with, you know, address this, uh, the, the certain desires in the religious fantasy, mm. right? So that's why, that's how a new movement, mm. so that's why, you know, the, I mean, uh, the Prema Kumar was saying that, you know, the uh, sort of conflictual relationship between established religion and uh, mm. the, the movements, mm. right? So uh, if the established institutionalized religion addresses, uh, you know, the in total, the mm. Uh, the entire the, the, the religious fantasy, the religious desire of the people, mm -hmm. so there, there, there cannot be, you know, mm -hmm. new movements. But that is not the case. Mm -hmm. That is not, always there is a tension, always mm -hmm. there is a tension. So that, that can be easily explained, you know, even uh, certain movements uh, in Islamic world where there is a big tension because mm -hmm. actually uh, the, I think when you look at the whole, you know, the global picture, uh, the, uh, the modernity, and the, 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 you know, the Islamic world is the, the context where you see a very serious conflict between the modernity and, you know, the religiosity, right? So, uh, so therefore, uh, the, you know, the, when the modernity and the, the, the spread, the globalize, and uh, so then the institutionalized Islam, in a way, as to, you know, the, uh, sort of uh, resist, uh, you know, yeah. uh, not not uh, resist actually to adapt mm. uh, itself mm. 
in order to the need of the modernity. Mm. So then, so that's a tension uh, grow up mm. between the the, uh, the religious fantasy mm. of the Islamic world mm. and the modernity. Mm. So then new movements mm. emerge. Mm. You know the Wahhabism. You know all mm. kind of uh, mm. fundamentals movement and so on. Mm. Right. So that's uh, so that's one way to uh, look at it. You know the the tension between mm. institutionalization and uh, mm. the the religious uh, the evol evolution mm. of religious fantasies. Mm. Right.